Weedmap stock is going public via SPAC. You're looking at the SPAC. SSPK is the SPAC or SSPK stock. SSPK stands for Silver Spike Acquisition Corp. So what is Weedmaps? Weedmaps is this weird hybrid between a consumer marketplace and a SaaS business or a software as a service business. So consumer marketplace meets software as a service business where they're working to help licensed cannabis sellers. Now keep in mind, it should be licensed cannabis sellers. Management thinks they can grow the business by 3x in the next three years, which would be quite a feat, potentially resulting in great shareholder returns over that time frame. I'm penciling out 300 up, up to 300% return over the next five years. You can see the full detail in the valuation towards the end. Now to put this in some context, they've already grown by 4x from 2015 through 2020. At least that's you know what their 2020 projection. So there is stake to this sizzle. Uh, this is an interesting setup. You know they've been profitable every year for the last 12 years. There's there's a real company here. I want to do a recap for you here. So that's the first 30 seconds for the folks that can't make it for the full video. But this full video goes through, you know, what do they do? What's their business model? What's their valuation uh, towards the end? And then I'll also have exclusive content just for Journey subscribers. This video does go out to Milo, who is an unrivaled investing Journey subscriber about that. What do I mean? So quick 10 second plug. My name is Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. This is a no hype mission focused channel to try to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. If you enjoy learning about potential multibaggers, the types of companies that can go up hundreds or thousands of percent over time, make sure you subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, I appreciate that thumbs up. And if you want to follow my personal journey to try to find potential multibaggers, go multi blah, 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 multibaggers, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, click on journey to see what I'm personally doing. What are the potential multibaggers that I'm buying? And a little later on I'll talk about the most recent one that I bought and how I think I'm um, quite excited about it. So what is weed map? So it's a weird hybrid, as I mentioned, between a two sided market, a two sided marketplace and a SaaS business. And first, boo on management, they did not create a PDF that is out in the public domain. As far as I can tell, they they filed it with the SEC. But in short, I don't have the crystal clear graphics that I usually do because they didn't make it easy for me to download a presentation. So boo on management. So I had a copy and paste from browser. So if the graphics aren't as crisp as you'd like, blame management, not me. Um, so what do you have these two-sided marketplace? One is Weedmaps users, you know, 10 million plus monthly active users focused on discovering and purchasing cannabis. They spend an eight-minute average user session length, and that's presumably before they get high, so imagine how long they'd spend after. Um, you have 60 million monthly user funnel engagements, 70% of Weed maps users consume daily. So this is you're talking about the Glen Gary leads here, um, and in the hundred dollar average order value for orders placed on Weed maps. The reason why this is important is Weed maps is effectively the go to destination for the real heavy duty potheads. You know the guys that are saying, hey, I'm going to spend a hundred bucks on my weed. And the reason why that's important is if you compare it to how much people spend in store, on average it's fifty bucks. So they're spending twice as much. And you're getting 70% of the users on Weed Maps are daily users. So these are the guys that got to, I guess that's the wrong gesture, that, that need to get their, their second dose um, or their next dose because they're doing it every day. Um, so then, you know, look at the business clients. So what's, so this is, this is the, the two side marketplace. Let's look at the business client side. You get 18,000 business listings. So that's the retailers, that's the brands on the Weed Maps website. Then you have 4,000 clients that are paying Weed Maps for this subscription bundle. We'll get into that in a second. 55% share of the total retail license. So that's that's really interesting. That means of the licenses that have been distributed in the United States to retail cannabis, 55% of them are registered, are listed on Weed Maps, effectively recognizing that the Weed Map user base is the number one market, is the number one platform for users, for discovery, so that this is the place where folks that are trying to sell need to go. That's a valuable position to be in. You want to be the number one market position because it sort of creates a self-reinforcing dynamic. They're spending on average $3,000 a month to be on the platform and over $1.5 billion is going through the Weed Maps platform in any given year. That's the annual run rate gross merchandise value. It's an impressive company in that it's been around for 12 years and has been profitable every 
year in that time period. The reason why that's interesting is, like, I, there's a great analogy that some sports, for example, attract high money, and some some sports attract like poor money. And you know, like, you're you're not going to get a lot of great money. You're gonna you're not going to make big bucks. Let's say, um, being a caddy at a tennis match versus being a caddy at a golf game. Like that's 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 like a cultural association. And the reason why that's I'm 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 sort of doing this non sequitur is because you get a flavor for the type of business when they when they're saying, "Oh yeah, we haven't really even been trying and we're still profitable." You know you're tapping into something that's interesting. You're you know you're tapping into an opportunity that's just huge um when you're profitable each year for 12 years and you're growing very quickly it, it strikes me as a really interesting sort of setup whereas a lot of companies it's like oh my gosh maybe we'll be profitable sometime in 2030. you know that's it, it shows you the different dynamics and we're competing against all these people you have to think about what sort of culture are you in what sort of environment are you in um so let's let's keep going so what's the value prop for users for users going to Weed Maps, it's about discovery. It's about finding deals, finding the retailers, getting delivery to your home, the locations, what are the local places, what has what I want. It's discovering brands, flavors, what are the effects. So, like for example, you know, this is your guide to cannabis, and you can see here it's it's here's the the the, the Weed Maps app and what it looks like, and you know, discover products, retailers, deliveries, doctors, and brands near you. So you can flip through it, see what the ratings are for it. They're creating a marketplace where there previously wasn't, where it's really hard to get a lot of this information. This is a lot of ways a lot like the Wild Wild West. We'll talk about that in a second, where it's just not standardized. It's hard to find out a lot of information. Um, you know, here it is over here. It's hard to read, but it says the best trains for hiking because apparently some folks like to tote up and, and go hiking. I mean, I I personally, that's I, I love to hike, but I never imagined that you know, that's how some people like to do it, whatever floats your boat, I guess. But it's really interesting to me to think that there's so many different effects, so many different flavors. Sometimes you want to go hiking after you take it. Sometimes you just want to curl up and eat an apple pie, you know, or, or get munchies or whatever. And so the, the whole point is that, you know, you need to know what you're getting into if you're going to spend a hundred bucks, you know, every time you're ordering it. You want to know the flavors. You want to know, like, what you're going to experience. It's a journey for a lot of people, not not the unrivaled investing journey. This is a cannabis journey, very different. Um, very different value proposition. And so here it is, Weed Maps is offering a very specific journey for their users of like, hey, let's discover, you know, this cannabis stuff. Um, what's what's the right flavor? What are you looking for? So here it is, weed right now or cannabis is really in this wild, wild west form. It's very early stages. And here's what management had to say. You know, on one side, we're the most powerful proprietary two-sided marketplace for cannabis, combining the largest audience of frequent cannabis consumers with the largest and most accurate set of brands and retailers. So this is a really powerful position to be in. In conjunction with that, given the fact that there's no normalized product information, no normalized product information, no stock keeping unit catalogs, and no general set of information that can be referenced to build this marketplace, we've then done an extraordinary amount of work ingesting, aggregating, and doing things like machine learning to normalize user feedback to create the raw data that's necessary to make the marketplace surface convert to help consumers find what they want and purchase it, and then to put a number of innovative discovery paths on top of that and help consumer shops shop for cannabis in the way in which they want to, i.e. this is part of the cannabis discovery for a lot of folks where they're going onto the weed map site to figure out what they want. What are they feeling? What have other people thought? Here's Emerald Sky Gummies, Wild Berry 100 milligrams, like, oh, this is for relaxing mood enhancement for your evenings. You know, like, oh, here are the ingredients. Here's the price. Oh, I can do price comparisons. Oh, on weed maps, I can check deals. Like, oh, what are, what are some of the products that they're deal? Uh-oh, this deal actually doesn't have a lot of people's interest. You know what, maybe I'm not, you know, or, or this, this product has three stars and it costs 10 bucks less than this. You know, maybe there's a reason why, or maybe maybe I should be paying 50 bucks a pop for this because I get I get a really nice high or something like that. So it's 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 really important to, to recognize that this is a wild west right now. There isn't this standard oil, you know, dominance factor yet where you've had like five brands take over and everyone knows them. You know, with standard oil over my you know, over my left shoulder I, I I generally have a picture of, of Ron D, uh, John D. Rockefeller who it was all about standardizing oil. Standard oil was the company, let's standardize the refinery products. You haven't had that moment yet with 
the cannabis industry where people have an association of like, oh, these are the brands that, that we want to own. This is what I want to buy. I trust this. This is the standard. Instead, it's Wild West of like, oh, you can buy the flowers. You can buy these gummies. You can you can buy this, this vape pen. You can do this. You can do that. And so it's sort of amazing that you have weed maps sort of aggregating all this data and then helping people point in the right direction of like, well, if this is what you're looking for, generally, this is the experience people have. This is generally the flavor people have. And you know, like, boom, here, here it is. Um, you know, you can go here or you can order it and we'll have it delivered to you. So what's the value prop for the retailers or for the brands? And the answer is these are the Glengarry leads. You know, Glengarry, Glen Ross, these are the best leads you can get for potheads. I mean, these are the potheads that mean, that mean business. I mean, this is a very attractive pool for the retailers, for the brands that are marketing. You know, for example, and I, I mentioned this earlier, the average in-store transaction or the average in-store ticket is 50 bucks. Pre-COVID on Weed Maps, it was 76 to 86. Post-COVID, it's 108 to 98 bucks. So this is for pickup versus delivery. So it shows you consumers are spending twice as much and these are the active consumers. So they're going to be doing it more often. So this is these are the leads that the top retailer, top brands need to have. And how does this translate into a business model? And honestly, this is also where management, in my opinion, doesn't do a great job or it could be improved because they don't spell it out in a crystal clear way, the way I like to see it. Um, and it's effectively, from what I've been able to parse out is reading the tea leaves, is that it's you, you have these licensed marijuana sellers and they're spending ad revenue on their platform for lead conversion, for future sales. And then there's this other element of software as a service or effectively this operating system for doing business for these retailers. So these retailers could effectively set up shop once they get a license, use Weedmap soft, heart, software to get their business going, get a full retail shop up and running, whether or not it's purely online or a physical shop. And so that's those are the two sort of revenue drivers. Let's dig into the, each of those in a second. So how is ad revenue you know, what, what's that look like? And what's interesting is they potentially have a cost advantage with ad revenue. Let's, let's talk about that here. In terms of the value, this is from management. We provide the businesses. So these are the licensed retailers or brands. Not only do we help them get down to the sub 10% portion of the population, i.e. the hardcore potheads, we are by far the cheapest way to reach these consumers directly. Although this will change as we go forward, right now we're providing essentially a 50 cents cost per click with five to 10 times higher conversion than they would receive going through other traditional channels like out of home or Google AdWords and that sort of thing. Here's where trans translate to dollars and cents. The, the weed maps listings for people, for, for the retailers to post, you know, their listings or to get priority when you're looking up like, oh, I want this type of high and this type of product, which are the retailers near me that service that, oh, I'm going to pay for that listing. That costs generally 50 cents per click. They benchmark that against various different other Google cost per clicks, which shows that like home goods is 294, consumer services 640. Health and medical, 262. That's a multiples of a difference, and it's made even better by the fact that their click through rate is 13% versus something like home goods, which is like 2%. That's an incredible delta. That, that means, once again, I, I keep saying Glen Gary leads, that means this site is the premium site for getting that click through, for getting a great return on investment on your ad spend versus doing something like a Google. So they have a low cost advantage in terms of ad spend, I would say, in terms of being a place for advertisers to spend. So a low cost advantage for marketing or a high return on investment for potential advertisers. Daily users that pay 2x the average. This smells like an unrivaled value proposition when I see low cost advantage. And you know what's interesting is you're tapping into this big potential market where they're saying currently there are about 8,000 licensees that, that can sell it. And if you were to have federal legalization of cannabis, you could potentially get up to 40,000. Now that's based on getting one license per 10,000 people. But if you were to look at alcohol as a comparable, alcohol has about the comparable density for, for alcohol shops. That would result in 100,000 licenses. Now we may not ever get there, but the delta from 8,000 to 40,000 is a 5X. The delta from 8,000 to 100,000, that's a lot more. You're looking at 10X. So either way, you're looking at a huge potential over time as society, particularly US society, debt burdened 
U.S. states society and need to pay their, you know, need to need to be able to offset their debts with taxes on things like cannabis, you see this as a multi-year, multi-bagger sort of potential in terms of the market that they're tapping into. But it's more than just more licensees. As you have more licensees that are spending on ad revenue, the per licensee ad revenue spend should be increasing should be increasing as well. So you have more licensees, so that's, that means maybe instead of just one cannabis shop in one neighborhood, now you have two. And if you have two, you might need to actually bump up your ad spend to get that business because previously you had all that business to yourself. Well, now if you have more competition, now you need to actually spend a little bit more. And so not only are you having more licensees or more retailers, you're going to have more retailers spending more. And this is their estimate of saying, look, 45% of our clients only spend less than 3% of their budget on advertising. So if you were to go to something like some other consumer goods products that are somewhere in the teens on their ad spend, you're, you're looking at dramatically higher. So that, you know, 5 to 10x potential, that could be much higher over time given that it's not only new licenses, it's new licenses and then spending more. So, but this is actually only one part of their business model. This is effectively this ad placement on the weed map site model. There's another aspect to the business that makes it even stickier, which is this business in a box, software as a SaaS, software as a solution, um, or SaaS. So everything a re licensed retailer could need, um, where there is no, this is what management has to say, where they go, there's no competitor to weed maps. We're the only one who provides a broad business in a box solution that has a paired cannabis marketplace. And once again, I apologize, that it's hard to read all this, but they're saying like, look, this connects you to all these different things, whether or not it's the top of funnel, like, you know, advertising deals or ad revenue, and then it works on orders. So that way it's easier for you. Like they help set up so that way you can take online orders. And then, you know what? You want to be able to deliver online. We're going to make that possible. And this is not easy. This is not like a DoorDash delivery that you can get into. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. We can also set you up with an online store. We can set you up with our weed map store. So that way you have a presence and people can click on your catalog. Then we have WM Retail, which is for for consumers going to your shop, buying in store, there's there's WM Exchange, which is that, hey, you're a retailer, you see some products that are selling really well. How about this effectively, this wholesale exchange where you're working with the top brands? Oh, this top brand selling real hot? You know what? Let's go straight to the brand. Let's buy it. We're going to do this via the exchange. And then you have a dashboard where you analyze uh, you know, what are the users coming in? Where are they coming from? What are the best users? Which are the ones that are paying 100 bucks versus paying 50 so this is like a full suite of solutions for retailers, for licensed retailers. And a key part of their value proposition is not only low cost on the ad side, but also low cost on the software as a solution side, where you know they say their monthly rate starts at 500 for the base. It's like 500 for, you know, you don't get everything. You just get a couple of these modules. Um, but if you want to get everything, you're going to have to pay up. So their base is 500 bucks, and if you wanted to try to build what they have, it would cost you multiples of that from various different parties. And they're like, look, no one in the cannabis space offers this full ecosystem of solutions that also connects with this huge marketplace. So this is a another smells like value proposition, an unrivaled value proposition for these cannabis retailers to be able to set up shop, have an online presence, manage their logistics, like, hey, I'm going to sell it from point A to point B, or, hey, I've just sold it. Let's keep track of my inventory. Oh, I'm running low on this. How do I automatically reorder from, from this brand? Okay, I need to be connected to this wholesale marketplace. A lot of this is Weed Maps is sort of building out this infrastructure, much in the way Standard Oil was to start building out infrastructure when the oil and refining industry was just starting to get built out. So, and, and this is a key part. This is a regulated substance. This makes makes it so much more complex. You can't just have a DoorDash driver come and pick it up and, and ship it somewhere. You know, with California legislation, you have 90-day GPS logs you need to keep, live fleet tracking of your drivers, you know, the drivers that have the contents in their trunk. You, you need to see where they are at any given time. There are trunk limits to how much cannabis they can have at any given point in terms of the dollar amount of the product. 
The age gating restrictions, obviously you don't want a bunch of you know 10 year olds ordering online. Um, driver manifest, recipient signature, like you need to make sure like, hey, this is getting to the end user. This can't be like old sushi that, that doesn't actually get delivered and maybe the driver eats it because he's hungry. Like this, this needs to be something where if they don't pick it up and they ordered it, it needs to go back to the shop because this is a regulated substance where every ounce is measured on like who owns it, who touched it, where did it end up? So tracking unfilled order, you know, back back in stock, you know, making sure it, it ends up where it's supposed to. And, you know, the, this is just, this is, this is made even more complex because it's a state by state, you know, rules and regs that, that they're going by. Um, and once again, this is how their value proposition solves challenges for these retailers in that their software solves these logistic challenges so that even though there isn't, let's say, the top three brands that own 90% market share, this, their software solutions are making it possible for many different brands to compete on a national basis ultimately when it is approved on a national basis because it's sort of this plug and play software. Oh, you want access to this market? Oh, we already set up the logistics framework that that meets with compliance rules in order to get you delivery, in order to get you online ordering. So you sort of get this pot flywheel of users going to weed maps and you can see 6 million users as of January 2020 up to 10 million in September 2020. So Geez, I guess, you know, here, here's an example where COVID, you get a nice 4 million COVID bump um, in weed map user engagement. And then you see the number of businesses um, that are on here going from 3.9 thousand licensed uh, resellers to 4.2 thousand. What's, what, now that's that's a little bit of a bump, you know, that's, that's like 10%. But the real bump actually comes from monthly revenue per client going from 2.6 thousand per month so monthly revenue times three point or or two to three point six thousand in september so that's a nice 30 percent plus bump um you know from january to september and what what's interesting is if you take these 4200 of of businesses that are listed on weed maps spending 3600 a month that's a run rate of 180 million in revenue if you're just able to keep this up so you do have sort of a ballpark of where they're at right now when you're thinking about their projections you know particularly they're penciling out something like 160 million in revenue for for 2020 and penciling out something like 200 plus for um, for, for 2021. So when you see this, you're like, oh, well, you're already at 180 million on an annualized run rate basis. And you can see like, look, the businesses that the, the licensees that are marketing and are, you know, using their SaaS technologies, they're spending more and more over time. So here's the 2016 cohort and you see how it's increasing over time. 2017, 2018, 2019. It's interesting that 2019 is actually a little lower than 2018. I wonder why that is. It's also really weird that they don't show the 2020 cohort. I, it's really weird. I, I, I wish they could, they'd show the average monthly revenue by 2020 so far. Uh, kind of weird that they don't. It's, it's sort of weird the same way that they don't break out the financials between ad revenue and the SaaS business. And it's just sort of aggregated together. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, the, at the end of the day, when, you, when you're looking at this business, they're increasing the value proposition for the retailers. Uh, and that's the reason why they're spending more and more over time. Now, you can see this sort of chart, which shows the lifetime value to customer acquisition costs, which becomes very favorable over time. Here's the 2016 cohort, now it's six times. So it's, it's interesting to see that these clients are spending more to access this ecosystem over time, which makes sense given that they have the number one platform for users to explore, begin their journey exploring cannabis. So what did their historic financials look like? And this, once again, this is just a beautiful business. You could see that they've annualized growth, you know, from 2015 onwards of 40% revenue growth. You could see in 2015, they had high margins of 30%. You know, I'd be curious on why that 30% has gone down over time. But, you know, given that this is a SPAC, you don't get that full detail right away. So, you know, I, I would probably say, look, this probably means they're making some critical investments in the business, making sure you got legal and compliance. You know, marketing spend is a good spend for them, especially when you're in this sort of hyper growth phase. But it does make me think that, yeah, if you've been profitable for the last 12 years, you're tapping into an interesting market and 30% plus margins over time could make 
a lot of sense. Now, here's what Mansman is projecting, where they're saying, look, we could, be, we could, we're, we're looking at a 40% CAGR over the next few years um, to get to 440 million in revenue by 2023, keeping their very high gross margin plus 90% gross margins. That's very, that's that's higher than Coca-Cola gross margins. And then you have EBITDA, you know, of of 30% profitability that they're penciling out a few years from now, so penciling out 130 million in EBITDA, which is, you know, a ballpark for cash flow. I mean, you can see here their capital expenditures are expected to remain very low. So this is probably net of cat net, net of taxes. It's going to be a pretty good proxy for free cash flow, I would expect. Um, so they're, they're effectively expecting these favorable trends, this 40% CAGR, to sort of roll it forward, assuming similar margins, if anything, margins revert back to, to a higher level. This, this, you know, this smells reasonable. You know, I, I, for my own underwriting, as I'd look at this as a prospective investment, I'd want to apply some sort of conservative range. But this smells reasonable. Um, here's the terms of the deal, where effectively you have a little under 600 million in cash, primarily from the SPAC, uh, Silver Spike of five 250 million, then another 325 million from the private placement, and then most of it's actually going to pay out existing shareholders. Now that that may have been early, you know, investors that are just looking for a payday as the company is compounded at a great rate. You know, the good news is management is rolling over 100% of their equity. So the stewards of the ship, the people that are going to continue driving where it goes, they have buy-in and they they you know they're not selling out. Uh, you do see about 100 million in the, of this cash going to the balance sheet. So the vast majority is going to pay existing shareholders getting a payday. So. And then another, you know, 35 million for for expenses because the bankers need to get paid of the deal 4%, which is, you know, in the, in the range that I usually see, 4 to 6%. You know, I, I covered recently one that had 8%, which struck me as ridiculous. 4% um, going to the SPAC sponsor, which is a nice deal if you can get it. So here's my valuation. This is a, my valuation framework. This is my value proposition to you, the loyal YouTube subscribers, um, where I show, you know, sort of what I'm penciling out. And then I also have this sort of management implied case where, you know, currently the stock's around 1290 implies a $1.9 billion valuation based on 150 million shares outstanding. That 150 million is here. The footnotes I couldn't even read. Once again, I'd love to have a PDF where I could read these. So I'm curious if this 150 million includes the 4% for the sponsor as well as, you know, future warrants and things like that. Let's assume it does. It might not. Uh, so 150 million there, nearly $2 billion market cap. Revenue guidance of 160, so I'm taking that, and then let's roll forward. They're projecting 205 million in 2021, so I'm doing some sort of discount of 15 to 25% growth versus their 28% growth in 2021. What's the long-term margins for this business? I might be a little too conservative here, you know, given that they previously were 30% EBITDA margins in, in 2015. Um, you know, penciling out 23% to 30% might be too conservative on the low side. Uh, on, on management case, I kept the 30%, which is in line with what they're projecting here. Uh, you know, a slap on a tax rate. Maybe that tax rate's a little low. They might have to have some sort of extra taxes paid in the future, just given the industry that's industries that they're, they're touching, you know, cannabis in particular. Then what sort of growth rate in the years ahead? Once again, low side, I'm just doing 15%. Maybe that's too conservative. Maybe. Um, then the high side, I'm doing 25. Then 35, this is sort of, this is the implied management case. This is not actually what management is underwritten because management's case only goes to 2023, whereas mine, I'm going to 2026. So I'm sort of rolling forward what management has to say. Um, so I'm assuming, hey, 35% annualized growth versus the 40% that management used. And I'm doing a 35 times multiple just because, look, if in five years from now, you're still putting up 35% annualized revenue growth, you know, even if it's down to 20 you know, 20% growth, it would su it would su suggest you might it might warrant a good multiple. Plus, you've you've historically been very profitable, so it's a yield plus growth aspect. Either way, if if you have questions about how do I think about these multiples, I did create an exclusive video for Journey subscribers: how to think about stock valuations or how to value stocks. I'd recommend uh, you you check that out if if you're interested in thinking about this in greater detail. So, looking at this, you know. Of course, it could go higher or lower. I just like having some sort of logical framework. And you can play around with this sheet in the description of this video. I'll post a link there. But just 
you know, sort of high level, I'm saying, look, this could go down 50% and maybe it could go up nearly 300% if they deliver around what management is saying. You know, if they deliver on what management's saying, you're probably going to get a lofty multiple and you're going to get a lot of growth. And, and there's, I'm, I am including this sort of annualized cash flow because they are profitable right now and sort of saying, on an annualized basis, your investment on the downside is 12% negative annualized versus upside of 35% compounded, you know, over the next five years, which which could be super duper compelling. That could be a really attractive risk reward, you know, because here it is, this 273% doesn't include this 4.5% in cash that effectively will be going to shareholders. It might be buybacks, it might be dividends, it might be M&A, but they, you know, they are generating meaningful cash that should be accruing to the shareholders over time. So if management delivers, if, that's a big if, then this stock could potentially be up several hundred percent in the years ahead. And so it, it definitely has an interesting story. You see this element of an unrivaled value proposition with you know the top marketplace offering a full suite of solutions for licensed you know cannabis retailers. You know, so the, so one of the questions you might be asking is like, am I buying? Am I interested? And I haven't bought SSPK stock yet. I'm 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 still thinking over or, or weed maps. I'm I'm still thinking over. You know, I have a lot more thoughts on the company and and look i some some viewers are like hey look make your video shorter you cover you know like there's so much here and so the way i'm doing it is i'll i'll you know i'm, I'm putting I'm, I'm going to cap it here but for these additional thoughts that i have the, that's going to be the exclusive content where it's thinking about their 2020 growth rate the department of justice probe that's going ongoing how federal legalization could change their business model because there's a lot of different levers there um, and other industry considerations when I'm thinking about this. But I'll save that for an exclusive post that I'll put in the comments below. So in the comments below, you can click on it if you want to see the exclusive post. But that is just for Unrivaled Investing Journey subscribers. And keep in mind, for Unrivaled Investing Journey subscribers, there's a lot more than just an occasional exclusive post. You can see what I buy, what I sell, what I hold exclusive content like an educational series, how to think about portfolio management, how to think about valuing stocks. I also aim to identify one potential multi-bagger each month on my personal journey. And so I'm sharing that you know, with, with journey subscribers, what are the potential multi-baggers that I'm trying to find? And I'm, I gotta admit, I'm, I'm pretty excited. The most recent multi-bagger you know, journey subscribers know about it. I think it has you know, 5X potential. Um, you, you'll have to check it out yourself if you're interested. I officially made it the January 2021 multi-bagger for those interested. Um, and there's also a, there's a full catalog of contents that you can see. I'll post that below as well so you can see what you're getting into if you're interested in the journey. And look, it is a journey. It's not a sprint. I'm looking to you know view this over a multi-month, multi-year, even maybe a multi-decade journey where I'm looking to find multi-baggers and find companies that I can compound with for years that I can hold and be part of my journey for years at a time that make me excited to be part of this journey. And finding just one multi-bagger can change your journey. So if you're interested in following my journey to try to find these multi-baggers, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, click on journey. And if you enjoyed this video, learning about weed maps, SSPK stock, make a point of subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, I appreciate that thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.